गुरुवे गौर चंद्र रि कृत डाले कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय ताद भक्ताय नमो नम वंच कल्प ध्रुव्य कृप सिंधु पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जाय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो नित्यानंद श्री आद्वैत गलधार शिवासादी गौर भक्तविंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे धन्यवाद प्रणाम दिवोटी बिफोर आई गेट स्टार्टेड आई वॉन्ट टू ऑफर माई धन्यवाद प्रणाम श्री गोपाल कृष्ण गोस्वामी महाराज एंड माई डीपेस्ट कंडोलेंसेज to all of his sisters and followers um maharaj was a very great savak of our shila prabhupad and did so much service over the course of so many years um i had personal opportunity to both meet him obviously but also to render some service to him when i was preaching in africa um he asked that i could come to kenya and to help some development of the temple in Mombasa which was a new temple at the time so um i was able to render that service for some time before having to return to my own duties in zambia but uh i take and pray that that little bit of service at his lotus feet will garner his blessings upon me to advance in krishna bhakti uh, in this lifetime So with that said I wanted to try to continue I've missed for some days uh our question and answer sessions uh and there are some questions which are backlog some questions as usual I've answered them personally if I felt they were either shorter questions didn't require to do it on this forum or something I've already spoken about on this forum and I didn't need to reiterate uh at least publicly here So this question was a new question and a devotee wanted it on this forum so I'm I'm honoring that request and I'm reading the question here it says I heard from a senior devotee that Krishna has three different characteristics that is that he is perfect more perfect and most perfect I um in a class had repeated this statement <clears throat> and was counseled by one sanyasi afterwards that this conception was wrong that krishna is absolute and krishna is always absolutely perfect so he questioned me as to where this came from and i told him i'd heard it from one senior devotee and that devotee had quoted it from sastra but i cannot remember what sastra it was quoted from So the quote comes from Ujjwalini Muni it's also written in other places uh but I know for sure it's written in Ujjwalini Muni in the description of Krishna's swarup Krishna has 96 qualities those 96 qualities are discussed in one section of Ujjwalini Muni it's described that Krishna is perfect in Dwarka more perfect in Mathura and most perfect in Braj so perhaps context may have been the what made this particular sanyasi not understand exactly what you spoke in the class uh and it's always good if you hear something from a very senior trusted devotee that you try to locate the source material for that quote so that you can always have the backing of sastra uh guru sadhu sastra is everything dandavat sadan sada prabhu Uh, Guru Sadhu Sastra is everything when we are making any presentations about uh the philosophy of bhakti. Uh in the absence of being able to quote Guru Sadhu Sastra, we avail ourselves to to doubt by others. So, um I know you wrote a few other things regarding the particular sanyasi and how you felt about his um questioning or your his correcting in in that particular case what you said. So perhaps it could have been context as I'm saying that he did not grasp the context that you were speaking in and because you you could not remember at that time what sastra it was presented in then you know it's it's pretty much the duty of sanyasis or senior devotees to try to keep 
some checks and balances on things that are spoken in the class. So he was not absolutely wrong in this particular case. Um, and neither were you. You were absolutely right. It's just that context and actual Sastra Praman was needed to back what you were saying. So in that regard, to make it more clear, this statement of Rupa Goswami refers to what is called Rasa Gatta Vichar. There are two considerations when we speak about Krishna. One is called Tattva Gatta Vichar. In Tattva Gatta Vichar, it means according to philosophical truth, Krishna is absolutely and always fully perfect. Even the name of Krishna, what to speak about Krishna Swarup, speak about Krishna Swarup, even the name of Krishna is described. This name is non-different from Krishna and is Purnasuro Nitya Mukto. It is eternally Swatta Siddha, it's called. It's eternally self-perfected. So Krishna Swarup is also self-perfected. You understand? So in that sense of Tattva Gatta Vichar, uh, this sannyasi is correct that Krishna is always and absolutely perfect. But Krishna is also called Akila Rasa Amrita Murti. Rasovai Shaha. So Krishna is the connoisseur and the very personification of Rasa. So Rasa means when Krishna expands himself, his internal energy is personified as Srimati Radharani. So it's explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Radha Krishna Chai Sada Eki Sarup, Lila Rasa Asadite Dare Dui Rup. That Radha and Krishna actually want absolute truth. But they have eternally manifested two forms in order to taste Lila Rasa. So two things are here. One is Lila. Lila means the activities of past times of Bhagavan in which he's able to taste Rasa. So now the question is, what is this Rasa? Rasa is a combination of ingredients that give rise to the tasting of the Ladini Vritti. Ladini Vritti means the pleasure potency. Radharani is the personification of that pleasure potency. It's explained in one verse, Ladini Sada Prem, the essence of Prem or love of God, whom Radharani is the topmost manifestation of this love of God, the essence of that love is called a Ladini Shakti, means the pleasure giving potency. Ladini Sada Prem, Prem Sada Bhav. Prem is a Bhav, it's a mood. Right? Bhav Karma Kashtana Mahabhav, the highest manifestation of that mood. It's called Mahabhav. Mahabhav has different divisions. Rud, Adirud. Adirud has also divisions. Modan and Mohan. And the perfection on the highest state which only exists in Radhika is called Madan Bhav. Or Madanakya Mahabhav. So, this pleasure potency of Krishna in its personified form of Srimati Radharani, whom Krishna has eternally manifested two separate forms in order to taste this rasa. So now, this rasa has ingredients as I mentioned. One ingredient is called the stai bhav. Stai bhav means a permanent sentiment in relation to Radha and Krishna. So it's explained by Rupa Goswami, stai bhava utprasa prokta sri krishna vishayani rati. So in this verse, the word vishay is very important because in after stai bhav, after the establishment of a permanent sentiment of love with Krishna, comes what is called vibhav. Vibhav is composed of two things. One is a alamban. It means the things that support love. And udipan, the things that stimulate love. So alamban here means vishai, which means the object of love, and asrai, which means the repository of love. So these are all the ingredients that compose, I'm describing what composes rasa. Understand? So this asraya is headed by Shimati Radharani, but it is all devotees who come in the anugatya or in the line of following not only Radhika but any mood of a sentiment of love towards Krishna, they are under the asraya of that particular type of love. Understand? And all love is sheltered by Shrimati Radharani. So this is called Asraya Jatya, the category of Asraya, or repository of love. Krishna is the object of that love, it is called Vishaya. You understand? So the second component of Rasa is Alamban, which is Asraya Vishaya. Then Udipan means those things which stimulate love. 
So throughout all the different leelas of Krishna, various incidents and pastimes stimulate love, including Krishna's qualities, Krishna's swarup, Krishna's venu maduri, rupa maduri, lila maduri, prem parikar maduri, Vrindavan itself, Jamuna, Giriraj, Govardhan, all things stimulate love for Krishna, they are called Udipan. Then there are Anubhav. Anubhav means the feelings which follow the love one has for the objects of their love. Right? So Anubhav are of two different types. One is called Sattvika Vichar, excuse me, Sattvika Vikar. Sattvika Vikar means eight symptoms which occur due to natural impulse. They have no relation to the application of intelligence. Like I'm giving an example to make it clear. If you will hear any good news, then hearing that good news, your intelligence process is, yes, some very good fortune has come to me. Wow, I'm very happy, right? So with the application of intelligence and the stimulation of a particular um, thing that made you happy, you express happiness by smiling, laughing, whatever it might be. Similarly, there are some feelings which trigger the sympathetic nervous system in such a way that you don't have any intellectual application to what happens to the body. So for instance, if you get some extremely sad news, it doesn't have to be sad news, it could also have been happy news, but if you get news that overwhelms the system and therefore automatically it brings tears to your eyes, it may rise to the point where you may actually faint because of that news. This is called asta sattvic vikar, like hair standing on end, trembling of the body, faltering of the voice, change of bodily color, etc. Hmm? Becoming stunned. So these are called asta sattvic vikar. So those which are working under the application of intelligence, they're called udvaswara. It means things that have the application of intelligence. And things which happen out of natural intensity of an emotion, they're called asta sattvic vikar, the eighth of them. Then there are 33 sanchari bhavs, it means temporary manifestations of an emotion which rises, Rupa Goswami describes, like a wave in an ocean, and then subsides back into the ocean. Right, so these are like danya bhav, humility, a vishada, a sense of disparagement, right, so there's 33 transitory system, um, uh, characteristics like that they're called, sanchari bhav. Understand? When you mix all of these ingredients together, it composes the ingredients which produce rasa. You understand? And ras, with a long A in Sanskrit, means how that is tasted. So those ingredients that I mentioned, they are tasted by Sri Krishna and by the devotee, right? This is called ras. You understand? So Rupa Goswami and all of our acharyas have also described Krishna and Krishna's pastime according to rasa gata vichar. It means according to the taste of that particular types, of, these particular types of rasa. You understand? So this is called rasa gata vichar. Vichar means consideration. So <clears throat> this rasa gata vichar takes consideration according to how Krishna is performing his pastimes. Those pastimes which are performed in Dwarka, the nature of the love that is manifest there, let's say for instance by the queens of Dwarka, it is called Samanjasarati. The word Samanjasa means there is some doubt as to whether it completely brings Krishna under control and satisfies him. And this is all written in Ujjali Mani and other places by Ashwala Rupa Goswami Pad especially but also in other sastras as well. So, Samanjasarati of the queens of Dwarka, right, it is doubtful whether it fully brings Krishna under control. You understand? However, in Mathura, because of its proximity to Vrindavan, there is more influence coming from Braj, and therefore, even though Krishna <clears throat> isn't tasting the fullness of how he tastes praying in Braj, there is some influence of it. You understand? There is some influence of it. Therefore, it's described that Krishna is perfect in Dwarka because he's Bhagavan, but he has more perfection due to the influence of Prem in Mathura, <clears throat> and he finds the fullness, most perfection, in Braj among those whose Prem 
headed by the Prem of Gopis, headed by Radhika, is called Samaratta Rati. It means it is fully competent, Samaratta. It is fully competent to bring Krishna under control. Ramani Shiromani Vishabhanu Nandini Nilavasana Paridana Inavirata Dini Varnavika Sini Badaka Vari Hari Prana. So he was saying that the nature of Radhika's love for Krishna is so great that mm, when Radhika's heart is exposed, it's like if you have gold and then you open that gold, the, the nature of the internal vision of that gold piece now is even more shiny. So when we examine the heart of Radhika, we see her frame is shining so brilliantly. And that frame is so powerful that Bada Kavari Hari Pran, Kavari means a brave. Her love is so strong that Hari's life, means the very life of Krishna, is bound up in the braid of Radhika. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written this Kavya, this poetry, in the Bhajan, Ramani Shiromani, describing the nature of Radhika's frame. You understand? So in broad, the frame of Radhika is fully competent, along with all the other gopis, is fully competent to bring Krishna completely under their control. That's why we sing every year during Dhamadharasakam, Iti Drikshwali Labir Ananda Kunde Fagoshami Manjantam Ayapayantam Tadi Yeshita Geshur Bhakta Chita Tvam So Satchivad Muni is saying that all persons should know that this love which is being expressed in Vrindavan, in Braj, it is superior to the Aishwarya Gyan Mai Prem, which is in Vaikuntha or Dwok or any place else. Because by this love, the residents of Vrindavan have brought Krishna completely under their control. You understand? For this reason, Rupa Goswami wrote that in Braj, Krishna is most perfect. You understand? So the statement, Prabhuji, that you made, it is not incorrect statement. The sannyasi who gave some correction to you did so primarily, perhaps, whether he knows or not this particular Rasa Tattva. Still, he's checking that if you're saying in general something like this and you don't have the Sastra Paman and the explanation to back it, it could be construed as being something incorrect. Right? Perhaps if you go back and now explain to him where you'll find it, you can find certainly in Ujjali Mani under the description of the Swarup of Krishna. I'm giving the place and everything in Ujjali Mani where you can find. You can give this reference to that sannyasi, and perhaps then also he may, if he knows, this tattva, as far as Rasa tattva is concerned, he can say, oh, well, this is what you meant. Understand? Secondly, uh, another part of your um, writing, you mentioned that sometimes devotees are intimidated when sannyasis or senior devotees uh, by tenure, means they perhaps were initiated first or etc., or the disciples of Ashila Prabhupada, that devotees may feel intimidated to speak because of such things. So again, I, I want you to be careful. Uh, do not, not become critical, right? Uh, try to understand that in many cases, uh, hopefully, <laughs> it's a matter of them trying to protect against perhaps some opposite Dantic idea coming in. So this is why, again, on your part, you need Sastra Praman and you need to be able to explain what it is you're saying according to Guru Sadhu Sastra, right? If not, then we won't hold that these persons have some malicious intent simply to intimidate disciples. Now, there are situations in which uh, perhaps the pride or abhiman of being the Sishya of Aushila Prabhupada or being a sannyasi may take some effect in how they approach a particular devotee. And in some cases, there is actually a adverse uh, idea, not adverse, what should I say? What's the better word? For lack of knowledge of Rasa Tattva and some of these particular conceptions in Bhakti, there is a kind of aversion to hearing it being spoken. Right? Because the idea is that if it becomes normative, 
to speak these things, it would also have to be normative that those giving the class understand these things and can explain them. And in situations where that may not be the case, then if there's any pride in our being sannyasi or any pride in our being a senior disciple, any pride in our tenure in bhakti based on when we took initiation, all of these things will give rise to protecting that prestige and therefore there will be sort of a diminishing of anything which they cannot answer or respond to. Actually, um, I don't want to say directly had that experience, but I was participating in one forum and I was uh, mentioning some things which if I have something that I'm not clear on, I will never speak it right until I confirmed it with Guru Sadhu and Sastra. Right, so if I say something, pretty much it, I'll be able to say where it is located in Guru Sadhu and Sastra. Right, other than that, even if it's something that I've heard from a very, very senior devotee, and I respect Sadhu Bhakti very highly, uh, I still want to find that place where it is in Sastra so that I'll have the ability to say yes, from Sadhu, and Sadhu also, if they're pure Sadhu, are like Guru. So I can say from Guru and Sadhu, and also from Sastra, I've confirmed this particular conception. You understand? So I spoke something once, and a devotee then responded to it, right? But they responded to it more from the position of being a senior devotee, but they didn't give any Sastra Brahman or anything to refute necessarily what was spoken. You understand? So in those cases, uh, there's also a sort of um, appeal to very senior devotees to not do like this. Because what it does is, and I did a whole question and answer session on creating a culture of inquiry versus a cult of compliance. Because if you don't inspire devotees to uh, ask questions and answer the questions, even if the question is beyond their Adi at that point, what answer you give them will give them enough inspiration to continue in the practice from where they are situated in Adi and gradually unfold to that position. If you discourage the inquiry, right, an entire basis of bhakti is questions and answers. The sages at Namashanayan, uh, Maharaj Pariksit to Shukdev Goswami, Narda and Yudhisthira, Krishna and Arjun, uh, Kapila and Devahuti, uh, Vidura Maitreya, Navayogendras and Maharaj Nimi, everything is questions and answers. So it is such a huge part doing prani part, beaming star nagat, then to guru one should pari prishna, one should ask relevant questions. And every question in bhakti has relevance to some unfoldment of that aspirant. So you have to be able to explain it in such a way the aspirant realizes where my digestion stops and where my future development will allow me to digest more. But if you simply intimidate, stifle, or uh, suppress the nature of inquiry, then you will get many more misconceptions in bhakti that arise. Because it is the nature that people want to try to understand what it is they're practicing. And if you stifle inquiry, you'll make them come up with conceptions that are not based in Guru Sadhu Sastra. So then actual opposite Dantic ideas will come up. Just like if, mm, I, and I'm taking the sannyasi simply didn't understand the context of what you were saying, and I already explained to you that the inability to, to produce Sastra Praman would have given more credence to him to believe it may be something that's not correct. But the idea that Krishna is homogenous, right, is a step above Mayavad. <laughs> you understand? In other words, when we see, oh, Krishna is just Bhagavan, right? He, there is no nuance or diversity within the personality of Bhagavan, then it is a step above Brahmavad. You understand? Mayavad is offense. Brahmavad, though, is seeing everything is kind of homogenous. He's Bhagavan. He's God, period. As Ram, as Narasimha, as Raha, he's just Bhagavan. <laughs> but Jeeva Goswami wrote, Bhagavan Sivad, Asadharana, Aishwarya Madhuja Tattvavise, Sharupara Mananda, Jiva Goswami is writing, what makes Krishna asadharana, means uncommon, is that he's able to reconcile Aishwarya Madhuja in his Braj Lila in a special way. It is certainly Aishwarya to lift, 
to lift over down hill. This is all kinds of Aishwarya. That a seven-year-old boy is lifting on his left pinky a mountain. But in Braj, nobody considers that Krishna is Bhagavan. So how is he lifting this mountain? Kacho makkal bala baro, kacho ko kisai. Kishori ji ki kripa se giribarali utai. This is one Braj poem. It's saying that the Brijabhati is considered. They, they took a counsel. How Krishna lifted Govardhan? So some idea was there that when Gargarishi came in order to do the name giving ceremony of Krishna, he told Nandastu Atma Jo Narayana Samaguna, your child will have qualities like Narayan. So Brijabhati took it because Nanda Baba is such a deep devotee of his Shalagram Shila that now the piety of Nanda Maharaj's service to Sri Narayan Shila is benefiting his son. This is one idea. But in this Brijabhat's poem, the elderly gopis, they came together and said, oh, we know why he's able to lift this mountain. Right? He's stolen butter from our houses for years and years. He's developed incredible strength from eating butter. <laughs> right? But then the cowherd boys and some of the men said, no, no, no. This is such a ridiculous idea. Actually, we saw that at one point the hill began to tremble. Because Krishna took one glance at Radhika, Radhika shot one glance at Krishna, that time the hill began to tremble. So they said, when that happened, we assisted Krishna. We took our sticks and canes, and we helped him to hold the mountain up. Then Lalita Saki, she began to laugh and say, oh, this is all ridiculous idea. This Giriraj Govardhan would not move. Kishori ji ki kripa se Giriraj utai. Krishna was holding this Giriraj because my Saki Radhika, by the power only of her glance, she looked at Govardhan, and Govardhan had fear to fall. <laughs> you understand? So this is Brijavasi idea. So the nature of how Aishwarya becomes overwhelmed by Prem. What to speak of Aishwarya, of Bhagavan being overwhelmed by Prem, Krishna himself, who is the possessor of all of those opulences of Bhagavan, is overwhelmed by their Prem. You understand? So this kind of Understanding is the basis of our practice in bhakti. This is what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to teach. You understand? Prema Rasaniya Skarite Ashwadan Ragmar Bhakti Loke Karite Pracharan. Mahaprabhu came to taste what is the love of Srimati Radharani. This mother Nakya Mahabhav. Because even Krishna himself, in his form of Krishna and the position I told about Rasa, in the position of the Vishaya, you cannot understand the depth of the love of an Ashraya. You understand? You're the recipient of that love. But you can't understand it. This is why this understanding of Rasa Vichar is very important. Because if you just think Krishna is Bhagavan, you think he knows everything, he can accomplish everything, then you'll think, what is the need of Mahaprabhu to appear? Because Krishna can understand all Radhika's mood. Why does he have to come as Mahaprabhu? But he begs, borrows and steals to become Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and understand this mood of Radhika. So it's very important to understand these things. It's mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Radha Krishna, oh, Radha, mm, Radha Pranaya Vikriti Ladini Shakti Asma, Dishlo. She Radha Pranaya Vikriti Ladini Shakti Asma. Due to the intense bliss that's experienced by Krishna as a result of Radhika's Pranaya, Pranaya is a synonym for love. I'm not explaining here, but love has so many different iterations. Right? Frame. Oh, Sneha, Man, Pranay. Rag, Anurag, Anurag turns into Mahabhav, Rud, Adi Rud, Modan, Mohan, and in Radhika, Madan. You understand? In English language, we say love. <laughs> yeah, butterflies in the stomach or something. I don't know <laughs> what the actual definition is here. But, Prem in concept of Bhakti has so many deep iterations. You have to study Ujjal and Mani to understand these, these things. But, he says here that that Pranay, here Pranay means Radhika's Pranay. She read her pranay. So this indicates pranay from the perspective of Madan Bhav. Krishna couldn't understand it. Vikriti, the transformations of that love, then produced in Krishna a Ladini Shakti Asmad. Right? Asmad means like the cause of understanding how the Ladini Vritti, I explained this earlier, how Ladini, this pleasure giving potency, is the essence of frame, how this Ladini giving potency is existing in Radhika. So that very potency, the transformation of love, produced the very form, Koshi Sachinandan Gora Hari Shi Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
Thank you, Radha Pranaya Mahima Kidraso Vanyeva. Krishna had these three desires. How to understand the Pranaya of Radhika. Do you understand? How to understand how Radhika tastes his four special qualities. Venu Madhuri, Rupa Madhuri, Prem Parikra Madhuri, and his Lila Madhuri. And what kind of Shokim Chasya, what kind of happiness does she feel? Krishna doesn't know this. Therefore, he becomes Satchinandan Gaur Hari. You understand? And in tasting that, he also distributed Rag, Marg, Bhakti Lok, Parite Pracharan. Primarily to the Bhakta Lok. It means the pure devotees from other incarnations. He distributed to them the intensity of the Braj mood in a special kind of Dasya Bhav to Mahaprabhu. This is why in the Srivas Angan, the Kirtan originally was very exclusive. Because it was only for pure devotees from other incarnations. Rupa Goswami has explained this in, it's quoted in Chaitanya Charitamrita, but he's also explained this in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Prem Leva Gopa Ramanam Kama Mityagamat Pratam Udavad Opiyetan Udavad Dayo Opiyetan Vajanti Bhagavat Priya. So Prem Leva Gopa Ramanam Kama Mityagamat Pratam. That kind of love which is celebrated as calm. Calm means like uh, lust, but here it indicates when it's in relation to Bhagavan, it is pure. So though it looks like calm, it's actually prem. So prem neva gopa ramanam kamam ityagamat pratam. It, this prem looks like love. The love between Radha and Krishna and gopis. It looks like that. But it's actually completely, absolutely pure. You understand? Then he says, Udava adayo apietan vajanti bhagavat priya. All the Vajanti Bhagavat Priya means all the dear devotees of the Lord headed by Uddhav. Because Uddhav himself, Gacha Burva, Somyam, uh, Pitro, Prithyavaha, Mad Gopi Vyoga Dim, Mat Sandishaya Vimochaya. When Krishna was in Mathura looking from his rooftop and looking at Braj, Krishna became overwhelmed thinking about Brijabhati. So he called, Oh, Jinto Uddhava, come. I want to send you to Vrindavan. Pitro Prithyavaha. You should see Nandan Yashoda just like your own parents. And by your persona, by your instructions, by your mood, Priti Abhaha, show them so much affection and relieve their separation mood. But then he told, Ma Gopi Viyoga, then, but my Gopi Viyoga, in their separation you cannot pacify it. Even though you are directly a Sishya of Brihaspati, you are very learned. Even I consider you my own counselor. Vishninam Paravo Mantri. He's, his, he's directly the counsel of Krishna. He's Krishna's psychologist. <laughs> understand? But, Krishna's saying, my gopis, you will not be able to pacify. So, to relieve their suffering, give them my message. And this constitutes a whole pastime called Udav Sandesh. There's one whole book also written called Udav Sandesh. In there, describes all the details of how Krishna prepared Udav to go to Braj. You understand? So, Udava. Being in, Brinja, in Vrindavan, he was able to hear the height of the Adirud Bhav of Gopis by Radhika reciting in the 47th chapter of the 10th canto what is called Brahmargit. Radhika's incoherent, apparently, speech to a bumblebee. Right? This bumblebee, our Acharya say, was Krishna himself directly. Some say like a messenger from Krishna. You understand? But Radhika speaks in 10 types of what is called a Chitra Jaut. Chitra Jaut means speech which has ten different categories expressing emotions in a state of unmad or madness. You understand? So Uddhava was witnessing that. And at the end he thought, oh, what can I do? A samaho chadanarenu do samaham sham. Vrindavane kim guma lakta sodinam. Can I become even a creeper in Vrindavan that rather than in gopis may place their feet on my head? You understand? After hearing this Brahmargi. So Krishna told, oh Uddhava, you yourself have directly witnessed this, therefore, headed by Uddhava, who became Paramananda Puri and Gaur Lila, all the devotees of previous incarnations, Murari Gupta, who was Hanuman formerly, the Panch Pandavas, who became the sons of Bhavananda Roy. You understand? Mm -hmm. Who else? Jai and Vijay, who went through the three iterations as demons, even became Jagai Madai and Gaur Lila, and were delivered. So all the devotees of previous incarnations, pure devotees, They've come into Gaurila to taste the intensity of what this Braj praying. So Mahaprabhu taught by his own Leela, what is the glory of, of this Vrindavan Leela and Krishna's most perfect manifestation. 
Understand? According to Rasa Gatta Vichar. So Prabhu, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, and uh, my dandavats to your family as well. Uh, your father, also is a very high class devotee. So surely he knows all these things and so forth. And to your good wife and your family, I'm also uh, praying. Uh, I, I won't be traveling in that direction. This year I'm traveling uh, to the west later on this year. After Bhakti Intensive is in June. So that's the invitation I sent you if you wanted to come to Bhakti Intensive. The rooms that I know now are sold, sold out. But uh, I think you can still book just by calling the, the facility that I gave you. That place, that Master Nutkin Resort. Right? I, I, the number I sent you, you can call. And I'm sure there may be still rooms. It may be checked in on a later date, but the, the actual classes don't start until that Monday. You understand? So, you can try to do that with your family. It would be very nice for the children as well. So forth and so on. Um, anyway, we could speak privately about, about that. But hopefully this answered your question about uh, what went on in the particular class and so forth and so on. And I'm sure if you go back to that sannyasi, but you should go back in a very deep mood of humility. Do not go back, well, listen, I got you now, sort of thing, because it's not proper. <laughs> you understand? We should always say, uh, not a piece to each. You understand? So we should not be critical. We should always maintain a mood of humility. You understand? And uh, in that way, very lovingly, we can have exchanges with devotees. And those exchanges are Guyamakiti Prachiti. Uh, they have pretty luxury. They have the quality of pretty. So we'll help our bhakti. If we become a little proud and, oh, okay, now I got it and so forth, it will, it will hurt bhakti actually. If you want to be able to chat nicely, be absorbed, then offer all respects to others and don't expect any in return. Like this. All right, my dandavat pranam. I also dandavat pranam to all the devotees who, I saw some devotees come on. So my dandavat pranam to you. Aladini Shakti Prabhu, we spoke earlier today. Uh, so you give me your blessings of the dust of Sri Vrindavan Dam. <laughs> and Hari Bol Ashok Prabhu, I see you on also. And uh, other devotees as well. All right, I have other services to do, so let me go and attend to that. Vancha Kalpa Turvisha, Kripa Shindavevacha, Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha. Jai Radhe Radhe.